the lowriders started developing a problem this winter. It took a bit to isolate. Basically, I started getting uh, smoke coming out of the rear exhaust, but it wasn't the kind of smoke of burning oil. What it, what it was is more like it was oil that was not in the combustion chamber and burning. And after some thought and analysis and what have you, it basically, long story short, was determined that oil is coming right through the exhaust valve through the, uh, through the guide, uh, getting sucked right into the exhaust, the combustion chamber being absolutely perfectly clean. And then that oil is burning in the pipe itself. So I'm gonna need to put new valve guides uh, in this head right here. As it would stand, the front one from the original build, I should have I should have looked a little closer at this. There, there's a little too much end play in one of these uh, uh, bushings in here. Um, and what it does is when it gets hot, there's, there's a really light tick, like just a little bit. And I put in a little heavier oil than I should to manage it. And I figured to myself, if I'm gonna do this top end job, I might as well take this one out too and have that one uh, worked as well to take that end play out there to quiet that down. I imagine that would only get worse with time. So this is basically going to be a top end project on this shovel head engine. And what this project is gonna be broken down to is in separate phases. So we're gonna have uh, the carburetor removal. We're going to have the carburetor rebuild as a, as a separate video. We're going to have the breakdown of this bike for what I call maintenance mode. You know, the removal of the tanks and the cables and the what have you to get at everything. And then the removal of the heads, uh, the subsequent preparation of the heads for that work. And then, you know, how, however it proceeds along, the reinstallation, putting everything back together, there's all sorts of things that have to be done with the push rods and, and the, the hydraulic lifters. So it's an involved process. I'm, I'm gonna try and find a good logical way to break this video up, kind of like I do with the Yamaha videos. So as I go along, I'll figure this out. So we're gonna get started now. And as it stands, uh, the first portion of this project is really gonna be the removal of the carburetor and the gas tanks, associated cabling and what have you. So I'm gonna see uh, how I document that and, and where it's gonna go from there. I'm gonna point out though, it should be obvious that this bike does not have the original carburetor in the ham can that came on this model. This is an s, &S uh, Shorty E carburetor, the early model. This is the one that doesn't have the adjustable air bleeder. Other than that, it is identical to the uh, current Shorty E. I'll also point out that with the exception of this air cleaner cover, uh, all of the rest of this is aluminum. This is polished aluminum, uh, except for the, the pipework and those uh, push rod covers. I have removed all the chrome from all of these parts and repolished them. Also, as I go through this project, I wanna point out that along the way, uh, this weld had broken on the oil bag. And uh, one of the things I'm probably going to tackle while I do this, Wanted to point it out in the first video. There'll probably be a separate video on the removal of this uh, so it can be welded and then the reinstallation. And one last note, I've received requests, if possible, to use the stabilizer for motorcycle videos. So I'm gonna give it a shot and see if it works out. The first thing we can do is we're gonna make sure the fuel valve is in the off position. And this project will begin with the removal of the carburetor cover. And the filter. I'm going to point out that I have a, a bracket here that it's it's kind of a cludge, right? Because this is a, a an inner cover here that's designed for it looks like an, an Evo. So I'm just going to have to remove this piece right quick. Now resuming with our business, these three flathead screws. I use Loctite on all of these screws, by the way, so they are a bit difficult to. Uh, break tension on, I use blue for these. Nothing crazy. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna pull the choke all the way up. And we're gonna clear this metal bracket right here and then pull this right off. In doing so, we allow that gasket to clear this metal piece. And that's why it's important to pull that up. We could see two hex bolts here 
I'll point to it down under here and one up here and these are holding the carburetor on uh, they're to be removed mine has a eight millimeter so I'm gonna go in there and just break the tension on them for now I'm gonna pull this overflow line down and out out of the way and then I'm going to remove this fuel line from the carburetor As a precautionary measure, I've laid some towels over the cam cover. Uh, if there's a, a mishap and the carb falls, I don't want it scratching the aluminum. It's just a smart thing to do. I continue now with the removal of the bolts that hold in the carburetor. I'm holding the carb from the other side of the bike. With that, the carb falls down slightly. I just let it down gently. I'll take out the spacer right here. Now I'm gonna remove tension from the throttle line. Turn this like this. Pull it right out of there. There we go. This is disconnected. Get that through there. Slide it out, and now that's gone. Some folks may have two, you're gonna have to uh, slacken the, the cable on the other side of your throttle if you wanna do that. Be that as it may, the carbon's now disconnected and we can pull it out of the bike. For folks who are about to ask, hey, why didn't you pull the tank off before you pulled the carb off? Would it have been easier? Not everybody watching the video needs to pull off their tank. So I pulled the carb off first in case that's all you needed to do. With that, I'm gonna start pulling off the tanks now. This is gonna start with the tachometer, speedometer console here on the top of the tank. As we get underway with the next step in this project, I'm going to start with the draining of the tank. And we do this simply by pulling the fuel line from the carburetor back through. I have a, a gas can down here, a standard red gas can. Place the fuel hose right in that can. Simply turn the valve to the reserve position. And maybe I'll just open up a cat, let that drain. We have some hex nuts to remove. This is uh, 5 30 seconds, these two, and 3 16 With the bolts removed, I'm going to pull a little slack from the speedometer cable upward like this. Just as much as I need to get my fingers in there and be able to unscrew the speedometer from the unit can also remove this rubber piece to allow for more clearance. That comes off like that. The odometer reset, simply remove uh, whatever cotter pin or metal piece you have holding this in place and then flip it around. I would suggest, since you want to get this off of here, you can remove that wire that's holding this in I have a wire, some people would have a small cotter pin. And there you go. Finally, there's an electric plug right here that simply needs to be disconnected. And with that, this is removed. I like to put these screws right back in. There's no need to have them getting lost. This is something that I always do if the project allows for it and the screws don't get in the way. Now I'll take the screw out of the bottom portion of the apron. It's quite possible you have a different bolt setup on your bike than I do. I have a quarter inch hex on this side and this uh, a half inch spanner on this side. The takeaway is, is that this apron is going to be removed and in order to do that, the upper tank bolt has to be taken out. Once I take out the upper tank bolt to remove the apron, I'm going to put the bolt back in. I'm gonna put it in loosely. I'm not gonna tighten it back down, but I'm putting the bolt back in. The purpose of this step is just simply to remove the apron and I will explain why after it's removed.
And this is what I'm talking about. You should never uh, start loosening the tank until you do it in this order. You should remove that upper bolt first so that you can remove the apron. And that's so obviously the other bolts can remain tightened. And this is the upper forward bolt of the tank. Now we'll look at the next one. The next ones are the rear bolts for the tank. Each side has their own bolt and they're only exposed when the apron is removed here and here. And finally, we have the lower tank bolt. It, it's right here just under this uh, fuel balancing line, just, just for completeness. I'm gonna take these washers, I'm gonna throw it right back on here right quick, right? Screw this on by hand, nothing crazy. Give it a cute couple turns and put that just like that. The first bolt that we're gonna be removing is the front lower bolt on this tank. I'm gonna to have to disconnect the balancing line between the two tanks from one of the sides. I might as well just do it here from the high side. So I'm gonna do that now before I get started. Now that I've got the line removed, the tanks will be able to separate. There's still a line in the middle, uh, but that'll come off as the tanks are pulled apart because there's no slack in between them. For this project, we're going to be using two 9 16th ratchets turned on opposite ends of this bolt to loosen it. do the rear bolt of the high side tank and I'm just going to turn that loose now. And I've removed that bolt. So what we've had all along the way is an insurance policy. We still have this top bolt in to stop the tank from falling off the bike. We can see that no matter what happens, it's not going to fall. And this hose is, is also in place, so I wouldn't recommend using this to hold up the bike. So at any time I can remove this top bolt and pull this tank right off, which I'm going to be doing now. I should point out at this time, before you take off tanks, have a place to put them and don't put them on concrete because that's stupid. Upon removal, I immediately place this bolt back on to ensure the safety of the other tank. Just a couple turns, that's it. I'm now going to remove the rear bolt on this tank. And securing the front bolt, I remove the nut. Holding the tank steady against the frame, I remove that bolt and take the tank off of the bike. I'm going to place each of these bolts back in the corresponding tanks, put the upper bolt right back in the frame, and the lower bolt will go right through one of the tanks. And here we are with the gas tanks and the carburetor removed. Um, there isn't a whole lot you can do here at this point. It's not like you could take the valve covers off. They don't come off in this frame. You would have to still take the, uh, the heads off of this bike in one piece to get the valve covers off. Uh, this something that I'm gonna be doing is removing these heads. However, if there was some other work that needed to be done, cables or whatnot, any reason to remove uh, the gas tanks and the carb, uh, this is where your uh, stopping point would be. If not, continue on because there is more to remove on this bike. Also, stick around because we're going to be rebuilding that SNS Shorty E carburetor as well. I hope you enjoyed this video on the removal of the carburetors and gas tanks for this FXS Lowrider shovel head motorcycle. Thanks for watching.